The brilliant poet and activist Maya Angelou, in an interview a few years ago, said, I'm always amazed when people say, I'm a Christian. I think, she said, already? You already got it? I'm still working at it, which means I try to be kind and fair and generous and respectful and courteous to every human being. So I'd like for you to think about that quote a bit this morning. I'm always amazed, she said, when people say I'm a Christian. I think already, you already got it. I'm still working at it, which means I try to be kind and fair and generous and respectful and courteous to every human being. And I'd like for you to think about one line from the scripture we read. Faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Now, there's a lot in that second chapter of the book of James. Thank you to Nancy and Jeff for reading that and leading us through it. I wanted us to, to read that entire passage this morning so we can sort of let all of it soak in. But I invite us this morning to focus on that sentence, that idea, faith without works is dead. And let me encourage you and invite you to, uh, to add to that mix one more phrase uh, from the Gospels where Jesus is remembered as saying, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. We are making our way through this Easter season, this season of resurrection. So let us keep that in mind. I am the resurrection and the life. And I want to take those three uh, ideas, those three quotes, and put them in the context of a recent event. Um, we mentioned last week that uh, there is a proposal on the table in our larger neighborhood here in lower Montgomery County, a proposal to redevelop the Montgomery County Public Library that sits on Connecticut Avenue um, in Chevy Chase. Beautiful, quaint little building that is in need of some repairs. And so a group of people who um, are active in thinking about the future of our county, a group of people and organizations have said, let's just not patch the building. Let's not just make some repairs. Um, uh, let's, let's do something new and creative and different. That library sits on a good-sized plot of land Affordable housing is a significant concern in the entire D.C. area and certainly in Montgomery County. So let's use that land. Let's rebuild the library as a mixed-use, mixed-income location. And so last Sunday afternoon, about 100 people, several Westmorelanders included, took part in a rally under a beautiful big shade tree on the library lawn to explain why affordable housing is important in our county and in our area, and to ask the county to reconsider developing the library with affordable housing as part of the project. Um, Action in Montgomery, AIM, was one of the sponsors of the event. Westmoreland is one of the founders of AIM. That's a network of congregations and schools and other community groups that is focusing quite intentionally on affordable housing. And also, affordable housing is an issue that Westmoreland has worked on and wrestled with um, since the mid-1960s. Um, and so this rally for affordable housing took place, again, about 100 people there rallying in support of affordable housing. And about 10 counter-protesters showed up. People who said they lived in Chevy Chase and are not in favor of redevelop redeveloping the library for affordable housing. Now, parenthetically, what is affordable housing? Um, the formula, more or less, and it's complicated, but more or less, you can qualify for affordable housing in Montgomery County and in the Chevy Chase area. A family of three can qualify with an income of about $75,000. Um, a teacher in the Montgomery County Public Schools uh, who might be a single parent with two children 
who has a master's degree and eight years of experience teaching makes about $75,000. So that is who might live in affordable housing if it is redeveloped on the Chevy Chase Library. Um, these counter protesters who were opposed to this affordable housing idea showed up with signs and chants, and I am all for the rough and tumble of democracy, right? I'm a congregationalist. <laughs> the exchange of ideas is a part of who we are as a community, as a nation, as citizens, as neighbors. And I understand concerns about traffic up and down Connecticut Avenue, and I understand costs of construction, and I understand that we need to pay attention to the details in planning. But here is what I heard with my very own ears from the counter-protesters. First of all, one of the counter-protesters called the police. Now, the rally organizers had the appropriate permits. They had planned this. The library knew they were coming. They had even borrowed some chairs from a local UCC congregation. <laughs> That's right. And the counter-protester called the police because it was unseemly. One person, one of the counter-protesters, was having an exchange with a rally attender, and they found out that person was from Silver Spring and said to them, if you live in Silver Spring, why do you care about our library? That's not how libraries work. Another counter-protester had a little heated exchange with one of the supporters, and the counter-protested protester ended that exchange by saying to this rally supporter, you can kiss my, and he named a body part that I don't think he really wanted that other person to kiss right then and there. And then in the middle of the rally, one of the counter protesters yelled out, don't turn Chevy Chase into Anacostia. The racial and class undercurrents may have been undercurrents, but they were pretty free-flowing undercurrents. So here's my question. How do we love the counter-protesters? <laughs> Don't show favoritism, the book of James says. How do we love the counter-protesters? So we'll come back to that story in just a moment, but let's wrap around back to these words from the book of James. Faith without works is dead. Works. Uh, many, many, many people in the Christian tradition have taken this verse seriously and passionately over the years. Uh, to follow Jesus is to make a difference in the world, to do good. Uh, Christians have set up soup kitchens to feed the hungry, have established hospitals to care for the sick. Georgetown and GW and Howard and Seton and Holy Cross, uh, uh, Holy Cross, all the hospitals in this area, those hospitals were originally founded by church people in church groups. The good works of Christians are many. In Greek, uh, James was written in Greek, as most of the New Testament was. James was writing in Greek, and the word for works um, is ergon. It's very similar to usage of the word works in English. It has several different meanings, like our word for work does. Um, the word work can be a, a, a one-time project or task. Um, if you're putting peanut butter on sandwiches for a hungry person, or if you're going to clean trash out of a creek bed, or if you're taking part in a rally for affordable housing, that is a, a work, that is a task. Um, work in, in Greek and in English, of course, can also mean your occupation, your job, what you do all day, every day, the calling of your life. Um, in that sense, uh, faith is also not about just one-time good things that we do, but faith asks us to make uh, our Christian work, our calling, our, our all-day, all-the-time experience. 
Um, I was talking with some friends this week about a, a doctor we know in common, a doctor who many years ago gave up private practice uh, to spend their life as the director of a free medical clinic because of their calling of faith. So work can be a project or a task, and it can be a vocational calling. There's a third meaning of work, of, of the Greek word ergon, that pops up in the scriptures. Work, uh, this third way, has been described by one theologian as the things that harmonize with the order of society. Now that's a little different definition of work, right? Uh, work is not just what you do. Work is that culmination of things that harmonize with the order of society. James Strong, a Greek scholar and theologian of the 1800s, identified that as a definition of how the phrase works is used sometimes in the New Testament, which is to say that work can be that transformative calling to make earth as it is in heaven. Um, after a pandemic, we are learning how to make society thrive, to make all creation vibrant and unified. And so we say about that kind of thing, we've got our work cut out for us. It's not just a task and it's not just a job, it is a sense of transforming society. Uh, to, to develop a, a system, to develop a society where there is truly affordable housing for all, and good schools for all, and affordable health care for all, and nourishing food for all, and transportation that is efficient and responsible for all, and peace so that everyone can sit down under their own fig tree, as the prophet Isaiah said, and not be afraid. That is the work of the Christian calling as well. Faith without works is dead, James said. So work can be a task or a project. Work can be your employment and your vocation. And the work of a Christian is this creative communal force that harmonizes the order of society. Maybe we could define that third understanding of work as saying that's what it is to be a human to care for other humans. That is the work of being in community. Uh, now, the work of harmonization, the work of ordering society for the good of all, doesn't mean that everyone is just included willy-nilly, uh, just everybody doing their thing and hoping for the best. If you're an orchestra conductor, for instance, and the clarinets are out of tune, you might say, clarinets, you're out of tune. Or trombones, you're playing the wrong notes in measure 37. And so sometimes we have to say to the counter-protesters, I think you've missed the mark there. But taking on the task of affordable housing at the Chevy Chase Library is one type of good work, the project work. Uh, devoting your life year in and year out to feeding hungry people or tending the sick or creating affordable housing, doing that all the time, that is work as a vocation. And creating a community where people live in affordable housing and people who think they are opposed to affordable housing can live together as neighbors, as children of God. That's also the calling of faith-infused work. Harmonious society, as James Strong said, or building the beloved community as Martin Luther King often said. So how do we live in such a way and love in such a way that we include the counter-protesters? By the way, if those 10 counter-protesters don't bother you, I want you to think of the people you really dislike. Who are the people you find absolutely abhorrent? And how do you love them? How do you love them? My original title for this sermon was something about celebrating our hands and feet in the work we do. I think I should have renamed my sermon to Dadgummit, Life is Complicated. It's hard work to be a Christian. 
Kaylee and I are preaching these sermons that parallel the themes of our confirmation class. And so what I would say to our teenagers who are going through confirmation is that by confirming your faith and becoming a part of a church community means you're signing up for a challenge. This is not easy work. The Christian work of providing affordable housing is important. Rallying, organizing, strategizing, planning, building. And if you get five votes at the county council, you may win that issue. But even if we build beautiful, accessible, affordable housing, we will not have won if those counter-protesters are angry and resentful if they hate their new neighbors. So how do we live in such a way that we don't just win with good works? How do we actually transform? How do we actually transform ourselves? How do we transform our neighbors? How do we transform the counter-protesters? How do we transform the earth into that place that is the home for God's goodness and grace and beauty and love and plenty. That is the work of the Christian. I am the resurrection, Jesus said. Resurrection is not about winning. Resurrection is not saying, ha ha, I tricked you, I'm not really dead, I won. Resurrection is about creating new life entirely. If you go back to the Easter story, uh, on that Easter morning, Jesus' friends didn't even recognize him after the resurrection because he had become something new. That's what we need as a society, as creation, to be transformed. We can't just play along with the old ways of winners and losers and us versus them. We need to be transformed into a new thing all together. Ched Myers, a Bible scholar and theologian, wrote a really good book about the political understanding of the Gospels. And he talks about that being seen through the lens of resurrection. And he wrote... We do not entirely understand what resurrection means. But if we've understood the story, we should hold fast to what we do know. That Jesus still goes before us, summoning summoning us to the way of the cross. And that is the hardest work of all. It is not tragedy nor victory, but an unending challenge to follow anew. Because that means we must respond. Our work is not to win. Our work is to live as a new creation. Our work is not just to change neighborhoods, but to transform all of life. Our work is not just for our hands and feet. Our work is for our hearts. Not just to do but to love, and to love, and to love. Amen.